Mr. Set? Mr. Doucette? Who is it? Who's there? I figure he was struck, hit the back of his head against something, probably the wall. Looks like he died instantly. How'd you happen to be here, Mike? Now, the set called, said he wanted to talk over an insurance matter. We knew each other casually. The door was unlocked, I figured. He left it open for me. Yeah, but somebody else got there first, huh? Oh, thank you. Is that the list of stolen items? Yes. Crescent City King's record collection, one clarinet, one cornet. But not just any cornet or clarinet. The clarinet was Jojo Miller's. Cornette was the one used by Jimbo Rollins. Uh, are you sure that's all that was missing? Well, isn't that enough? The record collection was only valued at two hundred dollars. Those two horns are insured for over one hundred thousand. A hundred grand for a couple of old horns? <laughs> well, jazz buffs can be just as fanatical as art collectors. Yeah, I'd say murder was pretty fanatical. Mr. Clayton, the Basin Street collection is it still there? Yes. And the Barbaro manuscripts. Well, they're all accounted for. All right, thanks. Thanks. Forward. Oh, is there anything else I can do for you, gentlemen? No, we're about through here for the time being. All right, if you need me, I'll be in the office. Oh, well, Mr. Longstreet, the board of directors will be very anxious to recover those instruments. 
Yes, I know. Mike, you any idea what that insurance matter was? All I know is one of the insurance companies I worked for wrote policy on those instruments. Watch the glass. They left some of the pieces in. What does that smell like to you? No idea. Sounds a little like, like cosmoline, but that's not what it is. I've smelled it somewhere before, though. Well, I'll send you a copy of the lab report when it's ready. It's strange. What? Why would the thief take the Crescent City King's records instead of the Basin Street collection or the Barbaro manuscripts? They're both in the same cabinet, worth a lot more money on the private market. Well, jazz isn't my cup of tea. I'm more of a show fan and WC man myself. <laughs> Clayton, hired by the Jazz Society when it was still just one room on Burgundy Street. Appointed assistant director three years ago. And a lot more knowledgeable about jazz history than Mr. Bissett. Truman Lavinius Deckbar. He's the man who found and donated Jimbo's horn to the Jazz Society. And he's a suspect? Mm. Mr. Deckbar is supposed to have one of the finest private jazz collections in the world. And he gives away a rare find like Jimbo's horn. Yeah. Uh, are you quite sure he's harmless? He's awfully big. <laughs> Shepherds never eat poodles on Fridays, right, Pax? Well, you know, I like this room. Antique furniture, heavy drapes. You can touch the furniture, but the heavy drapes? <laughs> All the homes in St. Charles have 15-foot ceilings, but uh, our voices don't sound hollow. Heavy drapes would do that. All right. You're a well-adjusted, clever man. But I still don't know what you want with me, Mr. Longstreet. I have no knowledge of the theft or of the murder. I understand that you found Jimbo Rollins' horn in a shop on Decatur Street, the uh, historical exchange. That's right. I've purchased several artifacts there. How, um, how did you know it was Jimbo's horn? Well, I didn't at first. Uh, please, sit down. I uh, purchased the horn because the make and model are very rare. It wasn't until after I got it home and cleaned and polished it that I saw the initials J.R. inside the bell. Collectors have been searching for that horn for years. You know. I'm told you have one of the finest jazz collections in the world. That you make a remarkable discovery finding Jimbo Rowan's horn and you turn around and give it away. Quite frankly, a political ploy. I wanted to be nominated to the Jazz Society's board of directors. But you were passed over. Why? Somebody blackballed me. Charles Doucette? Charlie didn't like me. It was one of those inane grudges that some people nurture for years. Well, just uh, one last thing. If someone tries to sell Jimbo's horn back to you, let me know, will you? Of course. Or Jojo Miller's clarinet. I assure you I would return the instruments to the Jazz Society if I could recover them. I'm sure you would. <laughs>
Okay, okay, don't spoil us. <laughs> right now, we gotta take a short one. But don't go away, we need the bread. <laughs> okay, waitresses, hustle! Got a request, Danny. Yeah, Gus. Hey, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Is that you, Nikki? Uh-huh. There's only one cat I know writes X-rated Braille. <laughs> Hi, Mike. So how about my request, huh? Man, if I did that tune in here, I'd turn this joint into a garage in one chorus. <laughs> Danny, I could use a favor. Hang it out, man. Well, you heard about this Jazz Society thing, haven't you? Yeah. Somebody cop some old horns. Uh -huh. You're any scuttlebutt, let me know, will you? You won the case? Uh huh. This one isn't going to be easy either. The street has a way of clamming up when there's been a murder. Murder? Yeah. I thought you said you heard about it. Charles Doucette, the society's director, whoever stole those horns, killed him. No, no, no. I, I hadn't heard that one. It's, it's too bad. Hey, when are you going to unload that torch? And when are you going to give up? Oh, what do you say, Molly? We're taking two weeks off the day after Mardi Gras. We could go to Miami and we could have a ball, you and me. I tell you, I got the bread. Do you really want me, Gus? Or do you just want something Danny has? Well, you ought to dig by now that the only thing in Danny's life is his music. He puts down on getting too hung up with chicks. Who lives in Arletta? I know you drive him there, Gus. Is it a woman? Could you handle that? That was a great set, Danny. Gus here. Yeah, yeah, like always. You look tired. Come on, sit down. Let me rub your neck. Not tonight, Molly. Oh, you know it always loosens you up? I said not tonight. I want to talk to Gus. Molly, join us. Okay. Hi, Molly. What's your poison? It's a gin night, Mike. Cold and lonely. All right. So I hit the guy. I didn't even know he would be there. It was an accident. Now, I'm no killer, and you know that, Danny. All I know is a man is dead because of you. You are alive because of me, aren't you? Well, whose shoulder did you lean on? Whose arm did you take? I never meant for anyone to die. Look, I did it for you, like always. Oh, come on, Danny. Now, you've got to keep quiet. Now, we've been together too long for you to turn your back on me now. If I kept quiet, police are in it. So is Mike Longstreet. What do we do about him? Street. Mr. Clayton. Hey, you got a pretty good ear. Maybe you should have been a musician. <laughs> well, I've been a jazz fan for years, but I can't play a kazoo and whole notes. Yeah, well, you're a lot better off, because it's a rotten life, musician. You didn't like it? Oh, yeah, I liked it, but I could never play like the really great ones, the old timers. I understand you've been promoted. Oh, yes, I'm the acting director now. Of course, the board has to approve the final appointment. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I'm very grateful. Mr. Clayton, the Jazz Society schedules various events during the evening, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, well, that was my idea, as a matter of fact. Lucette was wearing a tuxedo the night he was killed. Was anything special on that night? One early evening concert. And then afterwards, he said he had some work to do, so I left him here, in the office. Alone? What do you have in mind? Something I can't quite connect from the night of the murder, something missing. Mr. Clayton, why do you suppose anyone would want to steal a cornet and a clarinet? You want to come along with me, Mr. Longstreet? Thanks. Forward. Well, 
there was only one man who could blow like that. Jimbo Rollins. That was Jimbo's last recording. He was beginning to lose his lip when he cut that. Well, it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Lip or not. You think someone might have stolen those instruments for a sentimental reason? Jimbo Rollins. You worked with him in, uh, in those last years, didn't you? That man. That man was like a master tailor. The bone man cut the cloth, the drummer kept it even, I put the lace on, and Jimbo, man, he sewed it all together. I wonder what really happened to Jimbo. I mean, I know he, uh, he drowned in that riverboat accident, but I wonder what it was that ruined his music that last year. Oh, who knows, man? Jimbo liked to live high, much too high. Too many jugs of gin, honking in them joints all night, sitting in with all the bands. Anyway, when his chops began to go, he started in drinking heavy. Disappeared from sight for, say, like six months. Then turned up on that riverboat gig. And man, that was the bottom of the barrel for a player like Jimbo. They dragged the river, but they never found him or the drummer. No. No, they figured the gate has got him. You tell me, did, uh, did Jimbo have any relatives? He married a gal, but they didn't hit it off. She didn't believe in divorce. Jimbo started seeing the gal. A Cajun gal up in Bayou Lafourche. She had a kid by him. But Jimbo never said anything about it. You recall her name? them boodle names. Matteo. That's it, Matteo. Matteo. Hey, you two gonna stick around? The rest of the band be here pretty soon. Then a lot of satisfied customers come piling in here. <laughs> the combined age of our group is 408 years, and we still play good. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Kingston? Yes? Take a look at this, will you? It's not marked in Braille. Is there any label on it? Nope. Nothing on either side. Huh. Nikki must have missed that one when she transferred my records to cassettes. Must have. the inimitable, suave Michael Longstreet. Ah, didn't think I could juggle, huh? Ah, watch this. All poise and dignity, making a complete aardvark of himself at his own birthday party. No, honey, not that, Boz. It's the one your mother gave us. It's a rare... What am I going to do with a nut like you? You can kiss me for my birthday. I already have. So let's see if we can think of something else. She had a lovely voice. She did. I 
I didn't know exactly how to label it. Label it birthday. You got something for me? Lieutenant Toomey called. You were right about that shop on Decatur. The historical exchange? Yes. The Crescent City King's records turned up there this morning. The proprietor claims he didn't know the records were stolen, said some kid brought them in and sold them to him. Well, oh. well, oh, he's been suspected of being a fence for years. Well, listen, Nicky, about the, uh, about the prints. I want to... Mrs. Kingston? Yeah? The cookies are stale. Throw them out. That's that dog biscuit. You know, one of these days, you're going to put the lighter fluid where the cooking oil belongs, and I'm going to blast this right in the French market. <laughs> Pax? Pax, come on, boy. Come here. Come on. Here, boy. There. <laughs> you're a great dog, but your stomach's got no class. <laughs> How about Prince? The police lab come up with anything? Most of them belong to Doucette. Some were Clayton's. And a lot of visitors come and go and touch, don't forget. Oh, they did come up with an interesting smudge print. A smeared print? Not a smear. They definitely called it a smudge. Lines not defined. What about that sticky substance on the lock and cushion? And the lab's still running tests trying to identify it. All right, Nikki, I'll need a guest list from the concert the Jazz Society gave that evening. I'll get started on it. Watch him, boy. He'll eat you out of house and home. There you go, boy. Mike, they're looking at us. I'm warning you, Michael Longstreet, if you start something, I'm going to make you finish it. I checked the guest list from the Jazz Society's concert. Anything? The usual freeloaders, reporters, magazine writers, maybe 35 people in all, and the Les Marquette combo. Oh, yes, that'd be uh, Sid Prende on trumpet, Chop Slavert on tenor, Ollie Pritchard on bass, and... No, Gus Pollock played bass. Gus? But Ollie Pritchard plays bass with the Marquette group. Nine o'clock. Four. <laughs> Lever and grits for dinner? That's up the country food. Like they say, you can take the Cajun out of the bayou, but no, you can't. Yeah, I know. You can't take the bayou out of the Cajun. You two join me. Thanks. I'm going to talk to Molly. Thanks. Why not? Danny, did, uh, did you hear anything? Oh, you mean about the stolen horns? No, uh, nothing. I'm sorry, mate. How about a Ramus gin fizz? Okay. Two. Danny? Oh, Nikki, I try. I try so hard. Maybe too hard. He's been going up to our letter. Maybe he's seeing another woman. I doubt it. Well, then why? Why does he keep pushing me away? When I was a little girl, I guess I was about six, I used to love to explore empty houses and vacant buildings. I thought they were mysterious and exciting. And then one day, my little puppy followed me into one and got lost. That was the first time in my life I was ever scared. I mean, really scared. Not for myself, but for my puppy. Lost somewhere in all that darkness. I love you, Nikki. And I'm not afraid of the dark. Less needed a bass player. Regular man got sick or something. 
That's called me. I let him borrow Gus. What's this have to do with you, Mike? I'm checking everyone who's at the Jazz Society concert that night. That includes the band and Gus. Wait a minute. You don't think Gus had anything to do with what happened? I don't know, Danny. Do you? Well, he's not a thief, and he's sure not a murderer. Maybe there's some reason we don't know about. If you find anything out, you know where to find me. Pax, heel. Come. Come. Forward, forward. Mm. Stays good. Hi there. Hi. Corduroy. Right. You know, to a man like Truman Deckmore, lying is as much out of character as wearing brown shoes with a blue suit. What's he holding back? Why? Silk. Right. Well, those two horns would make an important addition to his own jazz collection. Well, why would he donate Jimbo's horn to the society and then steal it back? I don't understand that. Linden? Wrong. Cotton piquet. Cotton? What about Clayton? Well, he seems to have a lot of respect for an organization that uh, honors jazz pioneers. Why would he steal from them? Wool. Right. Then that takes us back to Gus. No, I can't quite picture him as a killer. That's what Madame Bordelon said of her husband. Who's Madame Bordelon? The fourth wife of Bluebeard. <laughs> Mike, are you sure you're not letting your feeling for Danny get in your way? You think I can't see something that's right in front of me? Close your eyes. Give me a hand. Hmm? Come on. All right, tell me, what is that? Easy, poplin. Wrong, Oxford cloth. Oh. <laughs> and I was going to invite you to my house for dinner tonight. <laughs> I was going to fix you red beans and rice and that up-the-country food you flip over. You ever been up the country, Nikki? Uh, I've been to Wagaman. No, no, I mean on Bayou Lafourche and Thibodeau. Uh-uh. Great people, the Cajuns. I get to take a run up there this afternoon and check the records office on a certain birth certificate. Okay. I told you everything I knew the other day. Well, since then, the stolen record collection's turned up. Uh, no word on the instruments. Have you heard anything? Mr. Longstreet, I admit I was impressed with you when you were here before. Why don't you stop while you're ahead? Open hostility. It's out of character for a man like you. You sound as though you haven't been sleeping lately. Just what do you want with me? Well, for one thing, that private jazz collection of yours. I'd like to see it. See it? Do you mind? No. Oh, of course not. Will you follow me? Excellent. I began collecting jazz memorabilia when I was still in college. Uh, I used to play the banjo a little. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Not professionally, of course. Just for parties and things like that. Come in, Mr. Longstreet. Oh, I wish you could really see my collection. I've got pictures here you wouldn't believe. Street bands, the great performers of the era. My cabinet here, I've got a banjo. Dates back to antebellum days. Uh, watch out for that table. Uh, that symbol... It was part of the traps that uh, belonged to Big Ed Despo. A uh, drawer for the Riverboat Five. Uh, yeah, and uh, I've got lead sheets here. Some of them dating back to the turn of the century. That Wawa mute used to belong to Billy Watson. What was that? Ah, uh, just an old uh, buffet. Supposed to belong to Jaime Phillips. Oh, really? I didn't think they made buffets in Jaime Phillips' time. Wait a minute, this is interesting. What? You know what this is, Mr. Deckbar? It's a full bame. Very unusual in New Orleans jazz circles. Very few men used it. Joe Joe Miller was one. I haven't slept since I got it. I was going to give it back to the Jazz Society. I just wanted to have it for a while. You know what, Mr. Deckbar? I believe you. I might as well tell you the rest of it. That. Two weeks ago, when I realized I had Jimbo Rollins' horn, I released the story to the press. That evening, some gentleman phoned me, said he wanted to buy it. When I refused, he threatened me. That's when I decided to donate the horn to the society. Well, I, uh, I appreciate your candor. Pax left. Well, Mr. Longstreet, aren't you going to take JoJo's clarinet with you? Well, don't you think it'd be better if you returned it to the society personally? Pleasant dreams. Left, left, left. 
yourselves a while, brethren, and drink up. Can they split? Mm -hmm. It's okay, To you, Danny? Alone? What's the matter with you, Mike? We're supposed to be friends. I'm trying to keep it that way. Then get off my back about Gus. Whoever killed his set left something sticky on the lock and the cushion that held Jimbo's horn. Something that smelled a little like cosmoline. So what? Rosin smells like that. The kind of rosin bass players use. And this humidity, it melts, gets sticky. You're reaching, man. You're reaching for straws. And the police found a peculiar fingerprint, a smudge. Callus would show up like that. All bass men have calluses on their hands, and, and Bourbon Street's lousy with bass players. Must be 30 of them in all the yeah, jobs. But only one played the gig at the Jazz Society concert that night, Gus Pollock. And you arranged for him to play. I checked with Les Marquette. His bass player wasn't sick. You called him. What are you bucking for? To win a blue ribbon with Gus's neck? Daniel, I'm not going to let you. You hear me, Whitey? still there, deep down, the, the gall, all the anger you felt when you were a kid. I know you, Danny. I knew you when you could see. Saw you angry then once in a while. It was never black and white anger. How do you do it, Mike? A step at a time. And what do you say when people ask you what it's like to be blind? I say the only thing wrong with being blind is you can't see. I want to help, Danny. Let me. You ever have a hunk of granite in your gut? It was, Gus, wasn't it? He'd, he did it for me. He knew I wanted Jimbo's home. I tried to buy it off that deck bar cat. Even threatened him. When he gave it to the society, I started calling Doucette. Same thing. I needed that horn. Why? Why? Because... Because you're Jimbo's son? Roberts was your mother's name. Matteo Roberts. After all the rap sessions we had... Politics, philosophy, jazz man... I could never see you as an investigator. Now I know why they say you're a good one. Look, Danny, I know that your father's horn held a lot of sentimental value, but sentiment is enough to have Gus go and steal it. There must have been something more, something urgent. Maybe something like Jimbo still being alive. Yeah, he's still alive, but not for long. He's had three massive coronaries in the last six months. After that riverboat accident, he let everybody think he was dead. His lip was gone. He owed everybody in town. So he drifted up to northern Louisiana, became a wino. Got into a barroom brawl one night and killed some hayseed. Is that why you go up to our lettuce so often? Jimbo's in the penitentiary up there? How did you know that? Molly thought she was seeing some woman there. 
Poor Molly. I've really raped her over the coals. He's in a hospital ward. He doesn't want anyone to know he's there. Mike, he's an old man, and he's dying. All he talks about is that old horn. Don't you see why I had to get it for him? I know how you feel, Danny, but... there's been a murder. It was an accident. Gus didn't know Doucette was still there. He, he panicked and he hit him. He didn't know the guy was dead until he read it in the paper. You're still gonna have to talk to the police about it. No! I ain't gonna let him lock me up in that place like his old man. No, Nothing. Gus! No! Nobody talks to the father. Nobody. Cool it now, Gus. Mike's our friend. But I didn't mean to kill that dude. I don't even think I hit him that hard. He just fell against the bar and slumped to the floor. Fell against the bar? That's when I picked up the horn and the rest of that stuff and split. He took all those things because he didn't want them to know what he really was after. Then the dummy got his 12-year-old nephew to sell the other junk to that shop on Decatur. The police figured Doucette fell and hit the back of his head against the wall. That's a good 20 feet away from that bar. Now, you level with me, Gus. Are you sure you only hit him once? I swear it, Mike. It's just a little tap. One punch. Hello? Just a moment. It's deck bar. Longstreet, I thought you might like to know. I've been appointed to fill the vacancy on the board. Oh, congratulations. I told Mr. Clayton I managed to buy back Jojo Miller's clarinet from an anonymous fence. Good. I, I wanted to thank you. How about Jimbo's horn? Any hope of recovering it? No, I'm not sure. Well, if there's any way I can help, you let me know, will you? All right, thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm curious. About what? What you're going to do? Right now, I was thinking about asking Mrs. K to uh, fix some lunch. Oh, maybe chicken sandwiches. You know what I mean. Yeah. I'm not sure, Nikki. I think Gus trusts me, Gus and Danny. I know I trust them. So you're not going to tell Lieutenant Toomey about the theft? No. No, not until I put all the pieces together. Mm, it's a little delicate, isn't it? Maybe. I've already told the insurance company I've got a line on that coronet. They're satisfied. But not for long. No, not for long. Oh, Mrs. Kingston, I was just thinking about some lunch. What's that? Lunch. Chicken sandwiches. Ch oh, Mr. Longstreet. Oh, Miss Clayton, how are you? Oh, busy, very busy. Now, don't let me interrupt. Oh, that's all right. What can I do for you? I understand the clarinet's been returned. Yes, it has been. I'm glad. Oh, any progress with the horn? I was counting on attracting a lot of tourists with it. Uh, we're planning a big publicity campaign. As a matter of fact, that's why I came by to see you. I think the society will have Jimbo's horn back shortly. Shortly? Mm-hmm. I have no idea where it is now, and I can practically guarantee it'll be returned. Oh, you mean you've made that connection that was eluding you before. I think so. I heard everything that happened that night, except the breaking of the glass case. I, I don't understand. No, the case was broken before I got there. Who said it was murdered later? So? So I'm meeting with the police tomorrow morning to go over what I found out. You see, the man who killed the set didn't steal the horns. Pax, come here. Inside, inside. Stay, stay.
Well, come on in. Door's unlocked. In here. to the Jazz Society after the concert, didn't you, Mr. Clayton? You're the only one with another key. That's why the door was unlocked when I got there. After I left, I uh, stopped for uh, a drink. I'd had a quarrel with just said. I figured as long as he was alive, I'd never get his job, even though I was more qualified. Pax, watch him. Watch him. for me to the board of directors to fill the vacancy. But he refused. Well, I went back to reason with him. And I saw that this play case was broken into and Jimbo's horn and some other things were missing. The set was unconscious. I decided to finish the job. And then you came in. Well, I figured you were no problem. Mr. Desant? Pax, go. Said came to, he got up. Can I hit him? Well, he didn't care anything about New Orleans music. The society was meant to honor those men who gave the world jazz. He was an outsider. He didn't belong. Man, this old horn and me, we blowed a lot of gigs together. I bet if you took all the wind that I blowed into this thing, you'd have yourself one swinging hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby, we seen it all. From Levis to palaces. Some nights we laugh, and some we cry. Mostly we kind of moan. It's all here in this old horn. All the pain, the kicks, and the lonely nights. It's old now and don't shine so good. Even one of the valves sticked. <laughs> Just like old Jimbo's. Oh, this old hunk of brass. I guess it's a part of me. Thank you, son. It wasn't just me. Gus helped. And Mike, especially Mike. Thank you, Mr. Longstreet. Sure would like to hear you play that once. Man, I tell you, if old Jim Bo's chops was in shape, I'd blow up a storm that would bring these walls down. So long, Jimbo. So long, Mike. Pax. Here. Oh. 
Is everything okay? When the kids think they invented it. What? Soul music. Thanks. <laughs> 